Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start. Uh, Oh, perfect. We're working on the problem of storing large volumes of digital data. The issue we're dealing with is that we're producing a lot of data and current storage technologies cannot keep up with it. We are using DNA as a storage medium for digital data. We are using synthetic DNA for data storage. So that means that we're storing zeros and ones into DNA molecules. And the zeros and ones can be images, video, anything, any data you want. And the reason we're doing that is because DNA is very dense. You can put a lot of data in a small volume. To give you an idea, uh, the whole accessible internet is estimated to be about 700 exabytes. And that would fit in the size of a shoebox. The other reason is DNA is very durable. In the right conditions, DNA can last for thousands of years compared to other storage technologies that last in the order of decades. And finally, DNA does not get obsolete. DNA will always be relevant. We're always going to have reasons to read DNA. Usually when you hear DNA, right, what you're thinking about is that DNA is the material of life. It kind of contains information about us, our genes say what we are. But in this context, this is really not the right way to think about DNA because DNA is also a synthetic material, something you can order from a company. And that's the kind of DNA that we're gonna use in this project. So the first step is to translate the data bits that we're interested in coding into DNA sequences. And they encode both original data and they encode the location within the file. And so we have multiple files within one DNA pool. So we can either store that pool or we can take the pool and begin to retrieve these files through PCR. So in the PCR process, you put in a very special DNA code primers. So that only binds to certain DNA files you want to put there. Um, so once that happens, the DNA polymerase will only amplify where the primers binds to. So basically it's a, a way to selectively amplify certain files. Once we have the individual files that we want, we're then ready to start uh, getting them ready for sequencing. And so we add on some sequences that allow us to put it in a machine that then tells us what that sequence is. And then once it reads that sequence, we're ready to hand it over to our researchers that translate the nucleotides into bits. So the sequencer outputs reads of the DNA that we've put into it. And with those reads, we're able to take them and assemble them and convert them back to our original files that we've encoded. Currently, the lab work that we're doing is a very manual process. Uh, however, in order to get DNA storage to the point where it's actually something usable, we need to be able to take people out of the loop in order to make it a faster and more reliable process. Um, so in order to do that, we're turning to robotic automation. So last year we stored hundreds of kilobytes of data in DNA and fully recovered that. This year we're working with hundreds of megabytes of data, which means a thousand times more DNA. In building the world record, we've worked with uh, Twist Bioscience to synthesize uh, 200 megabytes of data, which is well beyond anything that's been synthesized to date. Along with the collaboration with the University of Washington, we've demonstrated that we're able to recover data built out of 1.5 billion nucleotides. Of course, we have some errors, but we, as computer scientists, are used to dealing with errors. There are standard techniques for doing that. So when you want to store some data, you generate some amount of redundant data and you store it as well. So that, that redundant data helps you to cope with errors. The growth that we're experiencing in our global data centers is truly astounding. It's a challenge not only in creating new technologies to deal with it, but in actually inventing the new science to form a foundation for the future. DNA storage gives us that new foundation. And this is exactly the kind of problem that Microsoft Research was built to solve.